Hi guys, Rich here. Happy Monday morning to you. Another week. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, seeing you in the not too distant future. I hope things are going well for you uh, in your community groups as you connect with one another. And so hopefully someone has connected with you recently by email or by phone or by Zoom or Skype or whatever it is, even a, a drive-by social visit, whatever it might be. I hope that you are feeling uh, loved and cared for during these times. This is going to be a bit of a longer video, so I want you to hang in there all the way to the end because there's some stuff that we really need to talk about. There's some stuff that I need you to understand and I need you to be praying about because the return to church, it's not going to be as easy as we all think it's going to be. There's a lot of little things that knock on from one another that we have to walk through. Let me illustrate it this way. Last summer, Sam and I were able to go back to Northern Ireland. Uh, it will always be a part of my heart. It will always be home for me, uh, just as much as Canada is to a degree. Um, whilst we were home, I really started to feel something I've never really felt before. And it's whenever we were walking down familiar streets in familiar towns, it was the same street, it was the same town, but it felt different. Shops had been closed or had changed hands. There were, there were different, uh, there was a different feel to the place. It was still the same place. But there was a very different feel to it. These stores were still fulfilling the same function, but there was still a very different feel to it. Uh, you know what? That is a kind of a, an illustration of what I believe that we're going to feel as we come back to church, as we start to come back to church in small groups and in larger groups, Lord willing, in larger groups again. It's going to be the same place, it's going to have the same function, but it's going to feel very different. We don't have a date to return as yet, okay? We haven't planned for that as a, a, a staff, as a board, as a leadership just yet. So I, I really ask you to be patient because there's a lot of different details to be thought through. And besides, again, as I said on Friday, we've got to move from a production format to a live format and there's tech stuff that needs to come in. We have reached out to our local health unit. We have received recommendations for the, from them. And so we're thinking these things through. But there are many, many details. Um, for instance, signage. We need to update our signage. We need to get that right. We will probably only have one exit and one entrance and one exit. So we won't be probably using our back door. We'll be using our true front door to the building. Our fellowship time is going to look very different. You know, we won't be able to mill around quite so much within the foyer. We're going to have to perhaps go outside, go to the car park, social distance there to have our fellowship time. We won't have tea or coffee. We can't do that. Um, you know, there's going to be chair spacing that you're going to encounter within the auditorium. There's going to be corridors that are probably going to be closed off uh, so that that really allows less cleaning uh, between the different services that we're going to have. And, you know, cleaning and disinfecting, disinfecting all surfaces in between the services. You know, we're going to have to have masks available for those who want them. We're not going to be able to sing as much again for releasing things into the air. Our, we're going to have to have an offering box on the welcome center. Even communion is going to be feeling very different with uh, stations set up for you. We won't be able to pass the offering bags. We won't be able to pass offering plates. They're go we're going to still have the same functions, but it's going to look a bit different. It's going to feel a bit different, but we're still going to be able to worship. I also want to say uh, a thank you, a big thank you to the production team that have put things out Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. You guys need to know 
that what you see on Sunday goes through a production and editing process. It's not as simple as people just throwing videos in to the production team and that's what you see on a Sunday morning. Far from it. Far from it. Many hours are put in behind the scenes so that the product that is put forward is of quality and is of a high standard so that you will not be distracted from uh, oh, that's just, that's a bit fuzzy or that's not good and that sound quality is not great. You know, we want to do our best. We want to, as one of our core values says, try to do things with excellence here at Calvary. And so, again, I hope that you're thankful for what we've been able to do, for want of a better word, for the product that we've been able to put out Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. So, all that to say, there's a lot of things on the table that we're talking about. A lot of things. A lot of small things that knock on one to the next to the next to the next. And we need to do our due diligence to make sure that our ducks are in a row and that we take care of you to the best of our ability. Because you, the people, the congregation, the family of Calvary Baptist Church are a stewardship for us as a leadership. And we want you to know that and we want you to understand that and to hear that very clearly from your lead under shepherd, from myself on behalf of our staff and on behalf of our deacons board. So church is still the same place. The, the walls look the same. The foyer looks the same. The, the, the auditorium is the same, but it might feel a little bit different. But I want to encourage you to hang in there. I want to encourage you to be patient. And I want to encourage you as well to be, be flexible. Please, please be flexible. What we're doing here is we're starting to lead you off the map. We've never done this before. But I know that you have extended to us great trust in, in our leadership as a pastoral staff and in, in our, as our board, to our board as well, as we have led you through the past five or six years of tremendous change. And it's really testament to you that uh, you have been prayerful and you have been generous um, in your patience. Uh, but we're going to ask you to dig a little deeper into that. We're going to ask you to continue to be flexible because we want to fulfill the same functions for you. We want to be able to worship together in song, in word, in, in, in sacrament, so that you will continue to be able to worship the living God and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, experiencing the spirit together in our hearts as he's been shed abroad through faith and that we will be, again, continue to be unified. I want to say thank you again for your love and for your care and for your concern for us, for your generosity and your continued giving. I never want to take that for granted. Thank you. Um, there are some aspects of what we have been through as a church that, you know what, I don't know if I want to change. I really don't. I think this pandemic has sped up change. Crisis often does that. And I think that through our community groups, through our online giving, our technology ministry and things like that, I think that we have, we've moved into a better place. We really have. And I am so, so, so thankful for that. I'm thankful for the flexibility of our worship teams as they have led us from their homes. And, and you know what, guys? I don't even know what the future might hold we might start off with one, two services, bringing our community groups in two at a time, maybe. We might have to do services, two to three of them in the interim, working up to that, working towards that, making our mistakes, yes, as we go and tweaking and adjusting. Um, but I, again, I, I ask for your patience in that. You know, we're, we're, we're still going to be asking a lot of you as things go on. We will always have our Sunday morning uh, uh, 
production or live stream, or however you want to put it, uh, because we've reached more people than ever before through that ministry shut-ins who haven't been able to, to be a part of church. Folks like um, Mrs. Christina Keel, Mr. Ben and Mrs. Marilyn Brown, others uh, who have been on shift work where they've been able to watch the service either then or later on during the week. They have loved that. And I am so thankful that we have fallen into that by default. It's been an unexpected benefit as we have done the likes of this. And so I am so grateful for all of you who have bent and flexed and, 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 but still given and uh, given of your time, given of your gifts and, and given of yourselves to others in the necessity to reach out and to connect and to maintain the bond of unity in the spirit as Philippians 2 tells us. It's been wonderful to watch and wonderful to be a part of as well. And can I say this too? Our deacons meetings have been much shorter. Fantastic. Let's keep our, our deacons meetings on Zoom, shall we guys? Just a suggestion. I'll just drop that seed. <laughs> um, <laughs> just kidding. But I want to say thank you. Thank you to you all as you have uh, flexed, as you have found alternative vehicles to maintain uh, fellowship and to do small group Bible study, etc., etc., etc. I've gone on far too long. Thank you even for your patience in this. Rich, signing off for now. Please pray for us as a leadership and uh, that we will be able to do due diligence and to serve you well. God bless. Rich signing off for now.